Do I feel like anything I may say right now out of emotion may sever this relationship for life, even if we make up? Because sometimes, you know, you got those situations where you be arguing with someone and you say something and then y'all make up, but you still remember what they said because they said it out of emotion. And now you think to yourself, is this true? And the relationship's never the same. We're having the uncomfortable conversation. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Yo, what's going on YouTube? G. Brian here and I am back with another video. So look, if you don't know who I am, I'm owner of X28 Fitness and the Loft Athletic Club. These are two companies that I built in the past, but my goal here on YouTube is to help you reach your highest space. I want you to raise your energy and I want to help you elevate to whatever level you want to go to. God, energy, elevation, and that is the G code. So look, this video is very important because it's a follow up to my previous video of how to master your emotions. This is gonna be four steps you can use to improve your emotional intelligence. So let's get right into it. So step number one is you wanna to listen to understand and not to respond. You ever been in a disagreement with someone and it's usually because both people are just listening to each other to respond. Sometimes if you just listen to understand, it can change the entire situation and that's emotionally intelligent. So what I do in my life is no matter what I'm involved in, I'm seeing, am I really understanding what this person is trying to tell me? Am I really listening or am I just using my ego to lash back at whatever I want them to hear? And that's how a lot of arguments start. Sometimes all people want to do is be understood. Sometimes they don't even want a solution. They just want you to listen. So if you acquire this trait, I guarantee you will take your emotional intelligence to another level. Think about it. Every single argument that you've ever been in, every single fight that you may have been in, no matter whose fault it was, it it was always you trying to get your point across, you trying to get your point across. And guess what? After arguments, after fights, we have that temporary rush of feeling good, but sometimes we just feel bad after we, like we really didn't accomplish anything. So I think the world needs to be more about understanding people more than us trying to respond to everything, because that allows you to draw out conclusions that are based on understanding someone else's perspective. And then you can let them say, hey, I understand you. That's one of the best things you can say. Hey, I understand you, but this is where I'm coming from. Now you're not coming from this super racist aging emotional place where you're just trying to get your point across, get your point across, get your point across. I'm gonna tell you, I used to be there. I used to want everybody to understand my point of view. I used to run through walls and not look back and say, if you don't get it, it's my way or the highway. Now listen, that may get you somewhere, but after a while, it's not gonna get you where you really wanna go. You gotta be a person that can give out that reciprocal respect to all people and make sure that you're understanding exactly where they're coming from so you guys can make mutual contributions to each other and mutual contributions to the world. You're not gonna get anywhere if you're not trying to understand. I'm gonna read you a quote that I live by. It says that a smart person knows what to say, but a wise person knows when to say it. There are times when I don't even talk. Even when I may have something to say, maybe there's a point I can get across, I always ask myself, is this the time for it? Or should I just be neutral in this space and allow people to say what they have to say? Because at the end of the day, but the truth is always what stands. If you understand the truth and you know the truth, sometimes the truth doesn't even have to be said. You just keep the truth to yourself. Or if there's a time where the truth needs to be exemplified or needs to be shown, you can be the person to do that. But now you understand everything that's going on before you go ahead and present your point, right? I'm usually the last people to talk in a lot of conversations. I let a lot of people say what they need to say. And I listen very intent because this is the best skill. The speaking is for display and the listening is for understanding. You can't have a great display unless you understand exactly what you're involved in. My number two way to improve your emotional intelligence is you need to breathe into emotions of discomfort and pain. So a lot of people run from uncomfortable emotions or a lot of people act from uncomfortable emotions. So being like a person that's angry, they may go ahead and just release their anger however they see fit. They may do something within a rage. A person that is depressed, anxiety, has some type of fear, they might run from those feelings and they continue to perpetuate in their life because they never face them. So what I've learned to do along my life is I always breathe into emotional discomfort and I breathe into emotional pain because as soon as you breathe, breath is life. You know, God gave us breath for life and that's, that's the thing that can calm you down. It can put you in a neutral space. And you can decide how you wanna move. So case in point, somebody makes you angry, You'll feel it coming up, you feel it coming up, you feel it coming up. Just take a breath and breathe and decide now how you wanna move from a neutral space. It may take 10 breaths, it may take seven breaths. I used to didn't do that. I would act off emotion a lot and it put me in unfavorable situations. So I had to learn to use my life breath to calm me down and put me in a neutral space so I can make logical decisions and not decisions from emotions. Because emotional decision, even though it's emotional and emotions can range, you know, you could be this one day and you could be that another day, but guess what? The decision that you make from emotions could last forever. 
So you want to make sure that you're making a decision from a logical space. What you resist will persist and what you face can dissipate. So a lot of people think that emotions and movement, let's just use anger for example, a lot of people think that that's strength, that's power, but that's actually weakness in itself. The person that can stay neutral and know when to make that emotion, when to use it, and they can step into the emotional role, that's the powerful person. The person that can move from a neutral space, their emotions don't overtake them at any given moment, that's the powerful person. You know, when I use my team, for example, like sometimes I really don't be mad, but if I gotta be mad and I have to be disciplinary, I'm not just, ah, look what you did to me. I'm like, okay, this is a time where I'm gonna take on a discipline, maybe an aggressive, maybe a mad looking role, but it's for the time being. And I've already logically breathed into the moment and now say, okay, this is what I decide to be. Just understand that when you start to feel uncomfortable feelings, if you start to feel pain or you start to feel discomfort, or you start to feel anger, you start to feel jealousy, breathe into that and breathe into that. Take inventory about how you're feeling right there before you act on those emotions. Step number three, and it's a big one, it's gonna take you really dialing into this. You may have to watch this step a couple times to get it, but you always wanna think with the end in mind with your situations and the people that you're involved with, with your emotions. What I mean by that is every time you have a flare up of emotion and it's a negative experience, you create a wound and that gets deposited into you. It's deposited, like it stays there and it may not surface until a later date. So what happens with people is we continuously create these wounds within ourselves and we become a person that's identified with these wounded emotions based on these flare ups that we have because we cannot govern our emotions. We don't know what to do with them. You want to think with the beginning in mind because you want to ask yourself, does the person three years from now want to have all this emotional baggage? Do I want this five years from now? Always be thinking with your end in mind. The second reason you want to think with the end in mind is you want to see that before you have this flare up or before you engage emotionally in whatever emotion it is, how much value do you have for the person that will be receiving this emotion? And is this something that you want to tarnish or is this something that you want to sever? I'll give you an example. If you have a friend, right, and you consider him a good friend, you feel like you guys are having a disagreement and if this disagreement is raging, it's going higher and higher and higher, right? Ask yourself, you need to take inventory do I still want this friend? Do I feel like anything I may say right now out of emotion may sever this relationship for life even if we make up? Because sometimes you know you got those situations where you be arguing with someone and you say something and then y'all make up but you still remember what they said because they said it out of emotion and now you think to yourself, is this true? And the relationship's never the same. Marriages, relationships, friendships, business partners is always in the back of your mind or it's always in your soul or it's always in one of your energy centers. Those are wounds in themselves because now you're taking on that information and you can't think clearly about the person because you're paying for something that you did out of emotion, but now you come back to the truth, but the emotion is still like, mm, I don't know. Let's say you're in a relationship. Think about what is the end goal for you and that person. It does it end right here out of emotion? Are these things and these things that I'm feeling and these things that I'm saying, is this is where it ends? Because I could, I could do some things right now that'll end it. Or do I have a bigger purpose for this relationship and maybe I just need to understand, maybe I need to breathe a little bit and then maybe I can operate from a logical space so we, I can make sure that I value this relationship because I want this long term. No matter if it's personal, business, whatever. I see a lot of good things get severed because of emotions and emotions weren't really the truth. They were just the things that people were identifying with within that moment and now it's become their truth long term within their lives. The reason why I say this is I've experienced all these different things and I had to come up with a way for myself dealing with so many things within the world. I know a lot of you may deal with a lot of things. You may have business partners, you may have a job, you may have a relationship, you may have kids, right? You may have family that's depending on you and you have all these emotions all over the place and you gotta figure out how do I govern them and how do I not operate from emotion so I can make sure these relationships are fruitful. Because that's the goal is to have fruitful relationships. You wanna have long-term fruitful relationships. You don't need many. A simplified life of love, a simplified life that's spreading light and not rage, jealousy, and anger is what you want to look for. And that can only come from a serene space, a serene mind, and a neutral space. And that's what I wanted to teach you with these four ways that you can enhance and improve your emotional intelligence. So look, these are all things that I use in my life on a day-to-day -day basis. Y'all know I only speak from experience. And I'm really trying to give y'all some things that you may not hear any other place. So if you like this video, if you feel like it helped you in any way, even if it's just one step, I want you to subscribe. I want you to share it with someone who's a hothead. It may have been you in the past. I used to be that person. Share it with them. Let them know. 
All right, and follow me on all my socials and make sure you join the G-Code Telegram group. It's in the description. We got a lot of people, G-Coders, we're all elevating to the next level. They eating fruit, they personally developing, reading books, sharing just their life journey. So with that being said, y'all know what I stand for. Three things, God, energy, elevation. I'm gonna see you in the next video. That's the G-Code. Peace.